Woo, awesome. So first of all, I'm going to take a picture of you guys because I'm on Twitter all the time. And this is awesome Twitter fodder. So let me get a picture of you. And I hope you follow me on Twitter. I'm Nick is in PDX. So smile. Smile. You guys in the back? Yeah, awesome. Thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah, so you're all going, hey, what's the deal with the pink socks? What's the guy with the kill the pink socks? Well, I didn't always look like this. Okay? So, so that's me in 1895. Um, <laughs> so that's 1995. I was uh, working at the Vanderbilt Health Plans in Nashville, and I looked like that. And I had this friend call me. My best friend that I grew up with was living in San Diego, and he calls me and says, you know, we should go to this thing called Burning Man. And I'm like, huh, Burning Man? You know, what's that? And Al Gore had, you know, just invented the internet, so there wasn't a whole lot of information online about Burning Man. But the timing just wasn't right to go in life at that time, so fast forward about 10 years, and it's February of 2010, and my friend calls again. He says, hey, remember that thing we thought about going to, the Burning Man thing? I said, yeah. He goes, let's go. And so this time I said, you know, hmm, I'm 45 years old. Timing's probably bright. I'm not going to get any younger. I just need to start living life right now. So yeah, let's go. The only caveat is my father had been recently diagnosed with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And depending on the state of his health, I may need to stay home. Uh, so that's February. We get the tickets. And in June of 10, my father passed. That gave me the space and the self-permission to go. And so I went to the desert. And bam, that's Burning Man. So Burning Man is in the middle of nowhere in Nevada. It's about two hours outside of Reno. 70,000 people that gather in the desert. Um, I went. You know, you can go for all kinds of reasons. You can go for the music, you can go for the art, you can go for the partying, whatever you want to go for. I really went to disconnect, to unplug, was, was my big thing. Uh, and what I found in disconnecting was I found that I really made some awesome connections by disconnecting. My unplugging allowed me to plug in to you know, some really awesome uh, people who were living in heart space for a week, one week, living in a space without the construct of judgment or fear, just letting their heart speak uh, their truth and sharing in that. Um, one of my best friends that I met, this guy, uh, this guy, he came to Burning Man in 2010 for his first time at 70 years old. He's a retired art professor from Tampa, teaches, taught creative design, and he had had a cancer diagnosis. His doctor said, you should not do this, don't go to the desert. And I met this guy, and, and his name is Dick Patterson. He lives in Tampa. And I live all the way across the country in the US in Portland, and we've maintained our relationship all because of a connection that we made on the desert in Nevada, right? So, let's talk about socks. How did I get from Burning Man in these socks? So, at Burning Man, the city is, well, first of all, remember that slide I showed you was a big circle? For one week of every year, Burning Man becomes Black Rock City, which is the fifth largest city in the state of Nevada for one week. It's a self-governed city governed by 10 principles like radical self-expression, leave no trace, and my favorite, which is gifting. And so it's on the principle of gifting that the Pink Socks really came about. And gifting is, I'm going to give you something, and you don't have to give me anything back. You don't, you know, at, at Burning Man, it could be fresh water, I'm going to give you fresh water, I'm going to give you a beer, I'm going to give you a back rub, I'm going to give you pancakes, I'm going to give you bacon, I'm going to give you a bracelet or a necklace I've made. You're, you don't have to give me anything back. There's no quid pro quo, no tit for tat. Your gift back to me is simply accepting my gift, just saying yes. And so 
I happened to be raising some money for, for a startup, and I met that guy that was going to go back, that guy, Shlomo. I met him, and so you notice I'm not wearing the pink socks there. I'm wearing these robot monkey socks. But Shlomo is this, this older guy I met from Israel. He and his wife are traveling in San Francisco, and he was in love with these robo monkey socks. And I said, well, hey, I've got a fresh pair in my room. I haven't worn them. Let me go get them. I'll give you these socks. I gifted him the socks, and he was so in love with the socks, his infectious energy and his smile, that I remembered, I felt that power of connection of how that was at Burning Man that, to, to live a gifting moment. And so I said, hmm, I'm going to this conference in Chicago called HIMSS. There'd be 40,000 suit and tie people there, uh, all healthcare executives. And I think I'm going to roll in there with a bunch of crowd favorites, which are these, because everywhere I go, I wear a kilt. And when you wear a kilt, you have to wear fun socks. And so I stuffed my bag with these pink mustache socks that some of you have, right, that you've been gifted. Uh, and this is Eric Topol, Dr. Topol. He's a world-renowned physician, scientist, author, and he's one of the first guys I ran into at, at HIMSS that year in Chicago. And so I said, hey, you know, can I get a picture with you? And he's like, yeah. And, and I go, do you mind if I tweet this? And he's like, Nick, I wish you would. And so got that picture. I walked a few steps in to go into the conference. I looked down at my phone, and Eric Topo had tweeted it to his 70,000 followers. And so now I have all these people coming up to me going, okay, what's your deal? You know, why did Eric Topo tweet you and tell us your story? Um, so I've been able to keep going to conferences and, and show up. And, you know, the socks just kind of took off, right? Just like some of you have the socks. Um, some very important people in healthcare, patients from uh, leaders of healthcare companies. I was at um, Exponential Medicine, and that's a guy from Holland. That's another guy from Holland. You know this guy, Jeroen Toss from Philips? Super cool guy, little company called Philips. There's Hans, he works for him, yeah, he's got socks. Raise your hand if you got some socks today. Did you get, yeah, right? This guy's an astronaut, for freak's sake, right? Um, Captain McBride, he flew the space shuttle on two missions. And I met him and got a, this tour of NASA simply because of the pink socks, a connection was made. Um, a shared moment in time, right? And so, the socks. What, what does it really mean? It's a lot like Burning Man, right? So there's 70,000 people having 70,000 unique experiences. What do the socks mean to mean to you, right? That's what they mean. For me, they're about, and for the people that I shared a moment with that got the socks today, for me, they're about a shared moment, right? A smile, a connection. We had just a moment in this time to, to spend together. And think about all of the cool technology in digital health, telehealth, mobile health, all of the technology that we're working on and that's available today, it's all based around the premise that we're making a connection. And if we don't make that connection, it doesn't really matter how much technology we put at it, right? A, a doctor wants to connect with her patient. A patient wants to connect with his care team. That's what this is all about, right? Don't forget the power of connection. And that's what the pink socks are. Thanks.